I'm not actually an artist. I'm a programmer, and I'm doing an art talk. But that's kind of the whole point. Uh, I'm going to show you that using a combination of features that are built into Unity 5 and a few handy tools from the asset store, even somebody with no artistic talent or taste, like me, can make amazing looking scenes. So uh, this is the dropship scene that a few of you might have seen that was doing the rounds a while back and in the Unity 5 showreel. Um, yeah, I like it. It's really shiny. Um, and uh, what you're actually looking at here is the gorgeous dropship asset by Anton from Andromeda Station, a uh, few particle effects, and a lot of image effects. Um, this scene I will take apart a bit later on and show you it in detail. So yeah, uh, featured by Unity in the GDC showreel, and this took me about a day to put together. Uh, these scenes, these dioramas are quick and fun to make. This is another asset from Andromeda Station, uh, along with the Winter Shaders pack, uh, a cheap animated dog that I've posed a bit, and a huge amount of image effects. Uh, this is the quickest one I did. This was just a couple of hours of playing about. And this one. Uh, this is a free spaceship asset from the Asset Store. A uh, few trees by Speed Tree. Like, looking at it, I really like the tops of the trees. I think those are amazing. Um, I love speed tree. Uh, there's a few different terrain assets there for the, uh, the grass and the soil, uh, using Relief Terrain Pack, uh, which is essential for great terrain in Unity. Uh, terrain Composer, again, it's one of those essential tools if you're making terrains in Unity. And uh, yeah, All Sky, which is a huge collection of skyboxes. Um, again, I've got my favorite image effects on the camera, and uh, as you'll see, you can get a lot of different looks from the same few tools. Uh, some are more realistic, and some are more cinematic. This is the same scene as the last one, but a different angle and a different model. Uh, again, the exterior of the same dropship asset, just reuse of all these assets, and uh, yeah. On this one, so many people pointed out the grass should be burning, but those people are pedants, and I ignore pedants. And this is a dinosaur. Uh, it's a uh, raptor model that I found on the asset store with some amazing animations. Uh, speed tree, again, um, like for the, uh, the background, all the foreground. I don't know how well you can see it, like all the ferns in the front. Uh, they look fantastic. I love speed tree so much. I use it as much as possible. Um, also, light shafts from GitHub. So again, the same few kind of assets, but arranged differently. Uh, so much you can do with it. And one thing I found when creating this uh, is that the realistic lighting uh, that I'd set up didn't give me the effect that I wanted. Uh, when the only light source in the scene was the moon and a bit of ambient lighting, uh, the whole scene was far too dark. So what I realized what I wanted to do was do more movie-style lighting. So adding a light in front of the raptor and then excluding it, uh, everything else by using layers. And that worked uh, a lot better. And that's kind of a tip when you're doing these kind of scenes, and that's don't always aim for realism. Um, look at movies, you know, look at art, look at games, and get inspired by the things that you love. Again, this is an evening's work setting it up, and a very different look from the same set of tools. And more shiny things, uh, shamelessly inspired by Star Wars. Uh, again, very quick, and using the same image effects stack to create something that looks great, but has its own style. Uh, with this one, I had fun with the composition, getting a sense of hiding sort of beneath the log and uh, of movement and action. And I really like the way that the eye is kind of drawn across the frame with the log and the kind of like towards the action that's hidden on the right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, I mean, it's just fun making these things. And uh, OK, so before I do a deeper dive into the dropship scene, I uh, just want to take a Quick moment for some inspirational hand holdy stuff. Uh, if there's one thing to take away from today, apart from just buy a load of assets and turn everything up all the way, it's this, which is get creative in your spare time. If your work is under NDA, a lot of mine is, um, or you're working on something low end, on like low end mobile, or maybe your day job is a little dry and corporate. It's so much fun to cut loose 
and experiment and see what Unity can do when you're not working to any specific constraints. I was just working to the constraints of an i7 that was water-cooled and a 780 Ti graphics card, so those are quite high-end uh, requirements, which is a lot of fun. And uh, it's not just fun, it's a great use of your time. You can experiment with new ideas, you can try out techniques that are high-end today, but in a few years you'll be able to run it on mobile. And you can kind of show off your skills and build up a portfolio, and you can even get asked to speak at Unite in Amsterdam. So I think it's worth it. Uh, in general, though, um, yeah, it's just be playful and creative. I, I really can't recommend that enough. So time to take a look inside the dropship demo. Let's just play this back. OK, so what you're looking at here, First of all, you've got the Winter Shaders Frost effect that kind of makes everything that's going on behind it quite abstract and hides it from the user. And you see like everything lights up. You still can't quite see what it is. There's like a, a hot tween tween that's kind of changing the coverage on that. Uh, there's like all the lights and materials are changing in intensity. Uh, there's one reflection probe in there that's set to real time with uh, no time slicing. Uh, so when it goes dark, like everything is properly re re reflected, all the sparks kind of reflect off everything correctly. Um, there's also SE Natural Bloom, which is an essential Im image effect I'll be talking about in a bit. And a lot of colour grading. Uh, again, really, really important. One thing to note there, all the particles have got colliders on, uh, so you can kind of like watch them bounce all over the place. And sound adds a lot to the atmosphere. And again, all the sounds, everything, purchased from the asset store. Um, so let's just take a quick look to see how this scene was put together. So the asset store is awesome uh, and allows me to compensate for my complete lack of artistic talent. Uh, models, effects, editor tools, there's so much there for your toolkit. But there's good on there, there's also bad on the asset store. Um, but how do I sift through it and work out what's good without spending a load of money on things that aren't going to turn out so good? First of all, check the rating and the feedback. Do they actually reply to people's concerns? And if they do, how quickly? Also, check the Unity forums for what people are saying about their assets. And do they sell anything else? Is like their asset one of a series of many, and maybe the others have got really good ratings? Worth checking that out as well. Also, are they on Twitter? Do they reply to emails? I'll often email asset store providers and ask them a bunch of questions or harass them on Twitter and see if they get back to me. And if they do, that's generally a good sign. So right, inside the scene. First thing, the rendering settings. There's so much information on this on the Unity website. An entire talk could probably be around deferred and linear lighting. Um, I'm not going to try and condense that into a few seconds. Um, there is also a great talk I'd like to recommend to you by Anton Hand at uh, Unite 2014. It's on YouTube, and I highly recommend checking that out. He's, he knows everything there is to know. Um, so yeah, I suggest going on the Unity website and reading about this if you want to know more about why I chose those settings. Right, the next ingredient is lighting, which is incredibly important. Although I've got a skybox assigned here, that's actually only used for the outside areas, outside the dropship, which is all uh, work in progress. So you can kind of ignore that. Um, and in Unity 5, the skybox can provide the ambient lighting in a scene. Uh, as this is an inside scene, I've set the ambient intensity to zero. Um, because I don't want any influence from the skybox affecting anything that's going on within the scene. Uh, when it's dark, I want it actually completely dark, other than the sparks and uh, the, like, the glowing lights on the seats. Uh, there's a bit of ambient occlusion baked in. If you don't know what ambient occlusion is, basically it's kind of like where, uh, like where a wall might meet a floor and there's kind of like a darker area baked in and kind of like these crevices and so on. Um, yeah, again, there's a lot of information about that. Uh, directional specular on the general GI just to make everything look shiny because I love shiny things so much and uh, I don't have any taste other than liking shiny things. Uh, again, there's an entire talk based on everything there. Uh, I can't condense that into a few minutes. Okay, the actual lights. 
There's only four in the scene. Um, set to real-time GI, soft shadows. The flicker is controlled by code. To be honest, there is nothing special going on here at all. I was just setting up the scene in a way that I thought approximated what it would look like in real life. I was like, OK, some lights up there. Let's put some lights there and uh, yeah, see what happens. And it turned out all right. Uh, reflection probes. These are the most wonderful things, uh, as they make everything shiny. Uh, they're a standard feature in Unity 5. Uh, OK, basically, they capture reflections at that point in the scene and apply them to objects within the bounding box. That's kind of it. Um, also, it's using like box projections, so that actually works like that. Um, so what they do in my scene is they capture in real time the lighting changes and sparks flying around the scene. Uh, and that allows it to be reflected in the materials in the rest of the scene. Now, this will absolutely cripple older machines, but I don't care about older machines in my personal work. So I'm OK with that. Um, I'm just going to show you, actually, within Unity, um, just a quick example. OK. so. Here, if you look at this corner here, you can see the reflection probe updating in real time and getting, basically there's six cameras there. So it's like viewing all of that and then projecting it onto the rest of the scene. If I just uh, turn this off and on, you can hopefully see in this area on the, on the uh, right, if I just uh, toggle that again, you can see like all the reflections there and off. And that looks awful. Uh, <laughs> So put it back on, even though we'll completely uh, hammer the machine. Uh, but yeah, kind of a off and on. And if you can use reflection probes, do. You probably can't have them uh, real time and every frame with uh, no time slicing. But uh, if you're lucky, you can. And it looks awesome if you can. And really shiny. And yeah, I, I love shiny things. Right. Uh, how do I go back to the presentation? <laughs> OK. So. Materials. Uh, the uh, the uh, dropship interior just uses the standard shader. In what you've seen, there is nothing really special other than the standard shader. And uh, yeah, it's a part of Unity 5, and you can use it to make things look amazing. Uh, yeah, there's only a few materials in the scene, like one for the seats, one for the rest of the interior, and then like a few on the particles. The only things to really note here, uh, the emission is controlled via script. Uh, to help with the changing light levels, uh, real-time GI, and the use of algorithmic substances uh, for the textures. Talking of algorithmic substances, substances are the best thing ever. Uh, they're authored in Substance Designer. Uh, you can also purchase them off the Asset Store. Uh, it allows artists to expose various parameters uh, in Substance Designer that can then be altered within Unity. What does that mean? So you can change things such as color and dirt and wear and wetness and so on. And that means you don't have to go back to the artist to ask the artist for amendments in Photoshop. So in that way, they can rapidly speed up team workflow by not repeatedly asking artists for simple things again and again and again and again. Uh, and in general, if you see them on models in the Asset Store, it's often a good sign of quality. Uh, the artist knows what they're doing. They put substances on it. And yeah, it's generally going to be a pretty good asset. Um, now, I'm going to try and quickly go back to the IDE. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I can do this. Right, um, now let's just quickly open up a different scene, uh, show you what's going on. Uh, substance. OK, so people, does anybody here use substances of interest? Is in algorithmic substances. Anybody here use it? Uh, a few of you. It's so good. It is amazing. Um, right, let me just quickly, uh, oh, no, not that. Uh, be selected. Cool. Right, so if I select this, expand this. Let's find the actual substance here. And this will just take a few seconds to generate down here. It's kind of a complex substance, this one. So yeah, you can easily like tweak 
the different values of these substances and getting it updating it in real time in Unity, which is fantastic for me. I don't really know how to use Photoshop. So if I buy something on, off the asset store, if it's got substances, I can just go in and change it as much as I like. This substance has also got different uh, icons that can be assigned, and I've got one of my rubbish company logo there on the side of the dropship. Um, so yeah, substances are amazing and incredibly useful. If I just quickly go back to that one. Right. So next up, particles. The ones that I've used are straight out of the Unity standard assets. Uh, I tweak them very slightly to get a suitable effect. I changed the shader to SE Natural Bloom Additive Particle Shader, um, which basically it makes the particles really glow with this image effect I'll be covering in a few minutes. Um, yeah, basically it, that image effect makes them look awesome and really draws the eye to them. Uh, I also added collisions to make the particles bounce about the place a bit. And uh, yeah, I gave them a bit of geometry as well. Uh, so it's kind of, I wanted the effect of having like bits of metal spark off and bounce around the environment. And that was the idea. And uh, yeah, again, just standard assets, particles, and a few tweaks to get it working. Now, this is onto the thing that I truly love, which is post-processing effects. And uh, I think this is the really awesome stuff. Compare this. Uh, of the asset before I added any post effects to this. Uh, it's a huge difference. Uh, not only do they look different, uh, they feel completely different. And that is down just to the post effects that I used. Um, now, I think post effects are essential. They're used extensively in film. Uh, with Unity 5, you can use them in Unity 3, so nobody has got an excuse not to use image effects, in my mind. Um, and yeah, Unity 5 comes with uh, you know, a great free selection of uh, image effects. And uh, also, the Asset Store has got some great ones, which I'll run through in just a minute. It is worth noting that some will destroy the frame rates on older devices. But I really, really don't care about older devices. Um, anyway, so many people have asked me what my image effects stack is. And finally, here it is. There is not enough image effects. <laughs> there needs to be more, but I couldn't fit them on the screen. Um, <laughs> anyway, so all right, what I'm doing there is I'm using uh, some of the standard Unity ones and a few ones from the uh, Asset Store as well. It's worth noting that this is actually in the wrong order. Uh, in case you're not familiar with post effects, there is like an optimal order to the way you can stack them. Uh, however, much like you could overexpose a photograph to achieve a certain effect, uh, you can also do things the wrong way. Uh, to get the you know to get the effect you want and to match the aesthetic that you're after, which is what I've done here. Um, I've got a new effect stack on some of my more recent work that I'm not going to reveal today, but I will walk you through this. Um, I'm going to skip the description of some of these because they're kind of pretty straightforward. Um, first of all, depth of field. Uh, this is a standard Unity effect. I will quickly, in case you haven't used it before. Um, I will just quickly show you it. And Unity, uh, let's just align view selected. Right. OK. So um, in case you're not that familiar with how depth of field uh, works, it's pretty simple. OK. First of all, you can visualize it so you can see what's actually in focus. And then you can like change the focal distance to get different things in focus. You can change the focal size. You can focus on a specific transform. You can change the aperture. Uh, I'm using a DX11 defocus type just because it looks nicer. There's no other real reason other than that. There's also uh, like near blur. And here we go. If I just turn this off, why would you turn that off? Can you say that at the bottom? Like, why would you ever turn near blur off? It looks amazing. I love it. Uh, but yeah, you know, each to their own, whatever. Um, anyway, I use depth of field to bring attention to specific elements in the environment and to get that lovely bokeh effect, uh, which works particularly well with uh, small, bright lights. Um, right, OK, let's go on to the next one. SE Natural Bloom. Uh, this simulates subsurface scattering 
of light inside of a lens, and I use this on everything. Uh, in my mind, it's an absolutely essential asset store purchase. It is linear only, uh, and it requires HDR camera, so it won't work on everything. Uh, now, the lens dirt on it, well, I'll, I'll show you it quickly. Right. OK. So, SE Natural Bloom. This is it with it off. Look, it's horrific. Let me put it back on. It's so much nicer. Um, so, bloom intensity, you can kind of change that a bit. Uh, now, the lens dirt intensity, you can turn that off. Although, I don't know why anybody would ever turn it off, because it looks awesome or cheesy. I think it looks awesome, so I just turn it all the way up. Uh, yeah, each their own, whatever. Uh, I love SE Natural Bloom. I think, it, I think it's fantastic. SSAO Pro. Um, there is a Unity image effect uh, but, uh, for SSAO, but I'm using SSAO Pro. Uh, that stands for Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, similar to the Ambient Occlusion earlier, but it works Screen Space, so it's real time. Um, and yeah, it basically it does darken these areas. Basically, it makes things look more grounded in the scene, as if they belong there and not as if they've just been randomly like, placed in there. And it kind of just embeds them and makes them look just a little bit more real. I don't know whether you can really tell the difference between those two images. It is there. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do like SSAO. I think it just helps ground everything. Um, there is a few other different solutions for SSAO. Sonic Ether has recently uh, released a version on the Asset Store, which has got very good reviews, which I need to check out. Um, I'll probably skip showing you that because uh, we're running out of time a little bit. Amplify motion. Uh, motion blur. It's, uh, there is a Unity motion blur effect, but I love amplify motion. It's basically vector motion blur, which handles translation as well as rotation on all objects using per pixel vectors. Uh, basically, it makes everything look softer and smoother and uh, gives it a much more natural feel. Uh, it's a kind of a cinematic effect. You'll see it used in a lot of AAA games. It is not good for clean screenshots, as you can see. Uh, but in motion, it just adds that really, really nice blur to everything. Um, next up, color grading. So no color grading versus color grading. And it is hugely important when conveying a feeling to your audience. Um, it's used extensively in cinematography, and it's becoming much more widespread in games. Uh, for the Dropship demo, I used Colorful, uh, which basically has a bunch of Instagram effects, which I love. Uh, I don't have any taste. Uh, there's, also, uh, there's also Chromatica, uh, Amplified Color, and the built-in Unity image effect for lookup textures. Um, there is a blog on, the, on color grading on the Unity website that's got a few words from me on it. I will quickly show you Colorful because it's so good. Um, right, let me just scroll down here. And OK, right, all these ones with the little icons are colorful. So photo filter, so that just makes it a little bit warmer. Uh, so yeah, there's just a bit of orange kind of being added to it. And then now this one, the radial blur around the edge is so important. Uh, it's difficult to see on this, but if you can see it kind of just, it distorts everything around the edge, just a very, very tiny amount. And that adds a lot. It's kind of a bit similar to chromatic aberration, but yeah, this is just having a bit of blur around the edge, and it just gives everything this much nicer feel. A uh, bit of vibrance that you can't really see. I could probably have turned that off and saved a couple of frames a second. Uh, and then this one here, which is using the Valencia filter. So let's turn that off. And just the one filter could just add so much more to the feeling of the scene. Uh, yeah, I love Colorful. And yeah, there are some other great, great plugins out there as well. So that is a uh, whistle stop tour of the dropship demo. As you can see, it's a great example of how powerful Unity 5 is. And a few essential purchases from the Asset Store can give you a really useful toolkit to use again and again and again. And shiny things look awesome. And I particularly like this one because of like the, the uh, depth of field and the bokeh on the light, the, all the little lights everywhere. And you can see right up there the uh, uh, SC Natural Bloom at the top with all the dirty lens. Yeah, I, I love these image effects. Um, yeah, so to sum up, uh, if you're going to take anything away from this session, first of all, 
Learn to use the standard features of Unity 5, the lighting, standard shader, particles, reflection probes. They're all in the free version, and they're so powerful. Use the Asset Store. There are so many great props and tools to make your work really stand out. Finally, learn a bit from other disciplines. Learn a bit about cinematography, so you can use interesting camera angles. Learn a bit about photography, so you can get the hang of composition and the rule of thirds. There's lots of rule of thirds in the stuff that you've seen. And finally, maybe learn a bit of color theory, so you can use color palettes to convey emotion to your audience. But most of all, be playful and creative, and make things really, really shiny. And uh, finally, if you're interested, those are the uh, assets that I use the most, and I highly rate all of those assets. I suspect that will be on the web, and I'll put it on my website and so on. Uh, we have run out of time, but if you, want, if you want to ask me anything, then I'll be in the speaker's corner in a bit. Um, or you can like, ask me on Twitter, or email me. I'm reasonably friendly, I think. Um, and also, a huge thanks to Andromeda 3D that used, uh, you know, they made some amazing assets that I've used in lots and lots of my work. They are very, very talented people. Cool. And that's it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.